In the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, His servant, I welcome you to the program Soldier of the Cross, where the name of Jesus is lifted up, and then burdens are taken away, and souls are drawn into the kingdom of God. Today, I present to you my end of year message entitled, A Door of Hope in the Valley of Echo. For one good year, 12 months, 52 weeks, 365 days, the Lord has kept watch over us through the good and the bad, through the beautiful and the ugly, through the setting and the doubts, we are alive. Some of our resolution we made during the beginning of the year, they have been fulfilled. Others have not. But let us all give great thanks and beautiful adoration unto the name of the Lord. Those who are hurt or are in pain, I have some good news for you. Those who are smiling, to God be the glory, I have a very wonderful news for you. Let us pray. So Father, in the name of Jesus, this hour into your hands I commit my cherished viewers. May you bless them with understanding. May you bless them with victory. Then you, me, my servant, who stand uh, in your stead and present your word. Oh God, I pray that as I preach, may you see through my eyes and see all this, my cherished viewers. As I preach, oh God, may you speak through my voice that they will hear your voice. Even as I preach and lift up my hand, let the lifting up of my hand be a healing unto my cherished viewer. So today at the end of the presentation of your word, your name will be lifted high and we your children will be blessed. Thank you, O God, because you have answered our prayer for we have prayed in no other name but in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My cherished viewer, I would humbly ask that you take your Bible and then you flip the pages of the Bible when you get to the prophet Hosea. Hosea chapter 2, we are reading from verse number 14 through to verse number 15. Hosea chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. I hope you are there. Let us hear the word of God. And the word of God says thus, Therefore, behold, I will allure her, will bring her into the wilderness, and speak comfort to her. I will give her vineyards from there and the valley of Echo as a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. I want you to underline two words, wilderness and then the valley of Echo. God says that he will bring Israel unto the wilderness and there he will speak comfort. And then in the valley of Echo, he, God, will give to them vineyard and grapes. What about wilderness? I believe none of us will enjoy the wilderness experience all the wilderness times. Those times or experiences made you feel lonely or sometimes that you are forgotten. Those times will sometimes will make you feel that things seem to, to be taken away from you or you have been stripped good things from you. Those times you may doubt if God's goodness is there, or the existence of God is real. But God says that I will take you into the wilderness, and there he will allure you, he will draw, he will pull 
pull you. He will attract you to himself in the wilderness. The wilderness experience is good for us. Maybe throughout the year, from January to December, you have been taken through the wilderness. But let me tell you, the wilderness, as we hear and we see, the wilderness filters and cleans the air we breathe and the water we drink. And through the natural processes of evaporation and precipitation, we get these things by the grace of God. The wilderness provides humans with a way to connect with nature and escape the hectic rush of the modern world. That is the wilderness. God says, I will take you to the wilderness. Natural places provide us with solitude, recreation, and beautiful panoramas that calms our minds and help us to feel at peace and get connected to our maker and our Lord. And therefore, when God took the Israelites from the land of the Egyptians, they made a way through the wilderness for 40 good years, wandering and going in circles before the rich. They reached the promised land. Why the Israelites in the wilderness? God did not intend to punish them, but to remind them of his love for them and to show them that there are other new ways that we can live. The wilderness with its hardship and pain can end up as a positive experience depending on how you view it. Instead of thinking that when you're in the wilderness, instead of thinking that God is punishing you, which he does not, or God has left you, which he would never, we can trust in him. We can trust in his goodness and know that he is a blessing unto us. Creating hope in the wilderness. Creating hope in us and helping us to reach our potential in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the Lord said, I will bring you to the wilderness where you can admire me, where I will provide and you can experience the care and my goodness and my mercies. So if indeed this year God has taken you through the wilderness, I would want to assure you that from the wilderness, then you will enter into the valley of Echo and that will be your door of hope. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now again, let's go to the Kitas. Now we are reading verse number 15. Hosea 2.15. Hosea 2.15. And the word of God reads thus. I will give her, the hair refers to Israel. I will give her vineyards from there. In the wilderness, God says, he will give you vineyards. Look at how merciful and loving, how God can provide. I ask you, my cherished viewer, is anything too hard for the Lord? The verse continues, and the valley of Echo as a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when he came up. From the land of Egypt, where God, through his mighty hand, delivered the Israelites from the hands of the Egyptians. There was great joy. God says, that is what I will do you. But remember, from the wilderness, then you will go through the valley of Echo. The valley of Echo. And I want to tell you something about the valley of Echo, the meaning of the word Echo. On 
the wilderness, you will meet the valley of Echo. Israel had lost a serious battle when you read Joshua chapter 7, verse 4 and 5. After they have defeated that great city Jericho, when they were going to fight that small town, we can call it I or AI, they defeated the Israelites and Joshua didn't understand. And when Joshua inquired of the Lord, the Lord made it so clear that the actions of Achan and his family were the reasons of this their calamity. And the place of their death, meaning referring to the Israelites, is known as the Valley of Echo. From the Hebrew word akar, which means to disturb or trouble. In brief, the name Echo means trouble. And the name came from the question Joshua asked Achan. He said, why have you troubled us? Why? Why have you troubled us? It means that after the wilderness experience, we will go through the valley of Achan. More trouble. The valley of Achan lies northeast of Jericho. And it is. In between Jericho and Ai, it is about 25 kilometers from Jericho to Ai. Ai is to the east of Bethel, a distance of about two miles. The Valley of Echo is also known in the Bible as the Valley of Baca, Psalm 84 and verse 6. It is the same place when Abraham, or let me say Abraham came from all. He went to Haran, then to Shechem, which is Turkey, passed through the southern of Iraq around 215 BC, and then he came to Hebron, 1975 BC, present day West Bank. That is the area. For all practical purposes, Presently, Canaan is the land of Israel. And when God got to the valley, and when Abraham got to the valley of Echo, God told him, I will give you this general area, this parcel of land, and that is the land of the Canaanites to you. But when Israel got to Jericho and all those areas. Israel had committed adultery. And Israel, God's bride, needed to be spoken to. And that is why God had to bring them into the valley of Acre. Sometimes God wants to know that indeed you love him from your heart. And from the wilderness... To the valley of Achan, it was just moving from a flying pan to fire, from bad to worse. But God had a purpose. Maybe this year, you have been moving from flying pan to fire, from bad to worse. But I want to assure you that God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose. Don't, don't, don't give up. When you get to the valley of Echo, the first thing you see is a huge pile of stone. And beneath that huge pile of stone is Achan, his wife, his children, and all his possessions. Remember, I have earlier on said that this was the same place Abraham stood and God said, I will give you this land in the valley of Echo. 
So right now in the valley of Echo, you would again see another pile of stone. So in the valley of Echo, there are two piles of stone. One beneath, you can find the bones of Achan, his wife, and all his possession. And on the other hand, another pile of stone, there you will find the altar which Abram built for God. My dear brothers and sisters, my cherished viewers in the name of Jesus, even if you think that you come from a cursed family, if you think that you come from a cursed generation, I want to tell you, God will make a way because in the valley of Achan, where the place was cursed, it was that same valley. God promised Abraham that I will give to you and to be a land that flows with honey and milk. It doesn't matter. Don't don't mind, don't be bothered by what those prophets, the false prophets, are prophesying, whether good or bad. Don't worry. God says, even I will change your valley of echo to be a hope, a door of hope in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the valley of echo, Two piles of stones. One, it represents death, and the other represents life. In the valley of Echo, there are two piles of stones. Beneath one is, are the bones of Achan, his wife, and his possession. That represents death. On the other hand, there is a pile of stones, an altar that Abraham built for God to symbolize his thanks. And that stands for life. Which of the two would you want to choose? Right in the valley of Achan, you can see the love of God being demonstrated. The redemption of God being demonstrated. So I want to assure you, my cherished, my cherished viewer, it doesn't matter in your pre predicaments, in your difficulties, in your trials, in your petish, pe, pe, problems, I can see Jehovah El Elyon, God most High Jehovah El Elyon, the most high God, there present, the grace of God is there. Don't give up, don't let anybody confuse you. God says, I am going to bring to you a land of huge troubles where you are going to have many troubles. Where everything around you is bad, but in the midst of all this, I am going to speak to you comfortably, and I'm going to allude you to myself, and I'll tell you in your situation where you find yourself, where you are, none can help except me. Praise the Lord. I'm challenging you in your present predicaments. None, none can help except God. And God will tell you, this is what I have been trying to tell you. That when you rely on yourself, you can't make it. In the valley of Akon, the two piles of stones, one is righteousness by works. The other is righteousness by faith. Sometimes you think that where you have reached is as a result of your intelligence. It's as a result of how smart you have been. Your position, your worth, your status. You think that it, you, you did it, you made it. But I want to tell you, promotion comes from God. God says that, fine. Those of us 
who are finding it so difficult. God says, I have a better way for you. I have prepared you to show you a better way. You are in the land of the Canaanites. This land is for you. But there are a lot of enemies everywhere, wherever you go. And you are one of them. You yourself, you are your own enemy. You have mingled with them. And you have lost sight of me, who I am. I will lead you to the valley of Echo. And you will realize that I am the I am. And sometimes when you find yourself in the valley of Echo, you tell yourself, I just want to feel like somebody lost me. I have been abandoned by, by my whole life and I feel like giving up. When you are in the valley of Echo, that way sometimes you think. And when all things seem to abandon you, when you can see eternity but realize that you are not prepared for it, when you see that you can't take it anymore, when you can see that heaven is eluding you, when you can see that death is at your doorstep, that will be your valley of echo. But God says, I know you got some issues, big one. But when you have realized that no other can help you, this is what I have been telling you. And God says, in that time, at that time, I will allure you and take you out of them. My God is great. In the valley of Echo, it is there that you really see who you are. Who really you are. Many people have been saying they have found themselves in deep valley. Truly speaking, it is often in this valley that you can also find Christ. And when you give it all, you become a blessing. Today, as I come to you, my cherished viewer, as you view me, you listen to me, your present uncle represents your place of defeat, your suffering, and your great pain. But God asks almost all of us to go through a metaphorical gorge, a gorge of echo before really you can take over I, the town of I, that small town of I, you need to go through the valley of echo. There must be a repentance. The valley of echo is like a gorge. And when I talk about a gorge, a gorge is a valley in between two mountains or two high lands. It's so difficult to extricate, to get out of that. In the midst of the many, many, many problems, it is difficult to go out. But I want to assure you, the Lord will turn your valley of echo to greener pastures in the name of Jesus. Echo which has been a place of Israel's defeat and punishment, has now become uh, a place of blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. In the valley of Echo, God's anger moved into hope at Echo. Echo then is the door to and from hope. Defeat becomes Blessing there. Suffering becomes joy. Death becomes life. Listen to Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 10. Sharon will become a pasture for the flock. And in the valley of Echo, a resting place for the hares. For my people who seek me in the mighty name of Jesus. Echo had been a perilous place. 
Achan was executed there by disobeying God. Joshua was defeated there. It was where Israel learned painful consequences of sin. And thus it is Israel that brought that upon itself. The wrongs that were done, they wronged God. Maybe in this past year, you have wronged God. But God says, don't worry. And because of the wrong things that you have done, you find yourself in the valley of Acre. God says, acknowledge that. Confess and repent. Uh, and get away from there. And I will turn you, your valley of Acre into a door of hope in the name of Jesus Christ. When Israel dealt with their own willful sin, Confess and brought it to limelight. That is when they have chosen to obey God. Akko became a place of victory. But it was only then, after Joshua passed through it and claimed that victory, after they had executed Achan, God forgave Israel and took what happened to them and reshaped it for their good. God's good has always been good. Greener pastures now hidden in a moonscape. Water percolated upwards in the desert once dried. It became an oasis, a place of much, a place of plenty and safety. I pray for you. It seems though it is not a hard and fast rule that to transform Acre into a place of peace and tranquility, we must pass through it first. Through difficulties, suffering, and pain, as well as defeat, humiliation, and repentance. Echo to me represents the recent past, the one you have gone through. Now that you have dealt with sin and character defects and have survived the trauma of Echo, I eagerly wait his oasis of blessing. Peace, safety, and love. Listen to the song of Matt Redham. Blessed be your name. Whether you are in the wilderness or in the land of plenty, choose to praise God today. When you find yourself in the wilderness of life, when everything becomes a challenge for you, when you feel buffeted by trials and tribulation, maybe we, you must be steadfast in your faith and never think our God has deserted you. God who was good to us, in the time past is too good and faithful unto us. Let us hold on that the incoming year, God has something good. This incoming year, God will change your valley of echo to be your greener pastures. Don't give up. God is with you. Until I come your way next week with my new year message. Get ready. Be steadfast. Hold on unto God. Unto then. God richly bless you. Ahua.